Welcome to the Network Engineering Video Blog. I am your host, Michael Crane. Well, today's video is going to be about installing these two routers in our two post rack here in the lab. And as you can see, they're already installed. I uh, shot the video of me installing them earlier and it took a little over an hour and I had probably about 59 minutes of video and I'm pretty sure you did not want to watch 59 minutes of me racking these two routers. So I sped the video up 500% and reduced its time down to 10 minutes. Um, I will pause the, the video and slow it down to normal speed when I think, you know, you need we need to give more detail on something, but other than that, it's it's running at at 500% normal time. So um, anyway, I hope you like it, and let's get started. Okay, first we're gonna clean off some of the stuff on the rack. That right there is a um, walnut burl wood veneer on a quarter inch MDF that I use for the Muxall movement clocks. And this piece right here happened to have warped. <laughs> and so I use it to uh, block the fan wind, the, the wind coming from the fans when I'm sitting at the bench doing soldering. So uh, I just leave it there. It kind of looks nice. All right. So, and... Um, now I'm removing the uh, monitor. That's for the 3D printer. And that computer is also for the 3D printer that you can see behind the rack there. So we can make room for the routers. And the reason why I have to remove all that is there's not enough room on the bottom. And I'll show you a picture of it here real quick. All right. So now I'm... I'm covering up the Xena test set so I don't scratch it when I remove the the shelf. Okay. Oh, yeah. And I'm I can't get to the um, the screws on the the shelf by the wall because of the um, parts bin there. So I'm having to remove that. So now I can get to the screws by the wall. All right. That's removed. Get the towel out of the way. Okay, so now I'm measuring where I want the, the router mounts to, to mount, or how low I want the router to be, or how close I want the router to the Xena test set. And you'll see I'm, I'm kind of moving it up and down, and I'm, I'm thinking, well, you know, it's got cables running over the top of the Xena. The Xena is not racked. It's just actually just sitting on top of that Ethernet switch. And if I, I'd like to move it as close as possible to the Xena, but I'm looking at it and it looks like it's going to be too close. I'm not going to be able to get cables underneath it or over top of it. And so I decided to, to move it up you know, 1U or 2Us, whatever it is. Okay, then mark it. Now uh, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out without counting. Um, where it is on the other side, and I decided that's wrong, so I moved it down. Okay, I'm bringing over the the router on on our roll around toolbox, and every lab should have a roll around toolbox with an anti-static plastic or wooden um, top on it, just for moving equipment around. It's nice to put uh, keyboards and monitors on. If you need to roll over to a, a headless server and plug into it to see what's going on. And, uh, and also for console ports. And full of tools. Okay, I'm getting the brackets. And a screwdriver, kind of making sure everyone can see what I'm doing and how I'm putting the brackets on. And there's like six of these little screws that go on there. And, and if you notice, I'm putting the bracket on towards the front of the router and as soon as I figure out of course I'm going to put the other bracket on as well so but I'm, I'm going to soon realize that that is not the right spot for for those brackets because the brackets need to be towards the center 
of the router because this is a two post rack and everything kind of needs to balance in the middle or in the center of the it should rack the router should rack towards the center okay so now i'm now i'm pulling out the i i realize that i <laughs> i put it in the wrong spot Now I'm flipping it around, and the reason why I flipped it around is, is so I don't have to use a long screwdriver. And uh, so I can, I can use my normal screwdriver and get to the screws from the front of the router versus the, the rear of the router. And uh, you'll see here in a second, I'll, I think I kind of show you. All right, that router's done. So I got these extensions from Rack Mount Solutions in Richardson, Texas. And, and it's because the Cisco router is, is made for a 19 inch rack and um, my two post rack is a 23 inch rack. So we have to add these extensions on the Cisco uh, mounting brackets to, so it'll fit in a 23 inch rack and unfortunately these these extensions are only uh, 2u in height and the cisco router is a 3u device so i'm kind of looking around seeing okay where's the best place to put it top or bottom um i think i decide i decide to put it at the top i'm kind of seeing where the holes line up and uh, then I'm looking at, okay, which side do I want to screw this thing on? And uh, so as you can see, I'm screwing it on from the front of the router, which is actually at the back of the rack. <laughs> and um, I'm doing that so I can get to it uh, with a little bit more ease than coming in from the back. There, I just kind of flipped it around and kind of showed the screwdriver uh, length uh, from the front and to, to the back. Okay, so now I'm putting on the, the second bracket. I decided to put them uh, towards the top of the router. Uh, don't ask me why. <laughs> And as you can see, I, I put the um, I put the towel back on on top of the Xena so we don't scratch it and uh, damage it. And it also kind of helps the router slide around a little bit. Um, one other thing uh, I forgot to mention: when you're putting on those extension brackets, you want to align the holes in the extension bracket and the holes on the Cisco mounting bracket uh, in the center. And you probably didn't notice, but I didn't, I didn't tighten them down very tight. They're snug. They're, they're not going to move around too much. But I didn't tighten them down. It's going to help. And that helps when you go to mount it if you need to get a little bit more you know, left or right action uh, in the holes. You're not, you're not fighting with it. But starting from the center of, of the holes on both brackets is a good starting point, and usually they'll line up uh, without having to move them around. So anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. Okay. So I'm getting it all... Okay, did the, the top screws on both sides. Uh, put in another the bottom screws on the extensions. 
Okay, removing the towel. So now I'm tightening up the extension bracket since it's already mounted. Okay. Now I'm bringing the other router over. All right. This time I won't make the mistake and I'll put the brackets on the right <laughs> in the middle this time. And when I tighten these screws on, on these Cisco mounting brackets, I do it in a cross pattern. I don't know if it's necessary, but I do it just as a matter of course. Um, I have had cheaper brackets. The, the Cisco mounting brackets are super heavy duty, but I have had cheaper uh, metal brackets that, that um, if you didn't do a good cross pattern when you're tightening them up, they wouldn't, the screws holes wouldn't line up properly. Okay, so I just showed you the, a picture of, of the extension brackets and the parts, and um, it doesn't say where it came from, but I got it from a rack mount solutions. So anyway, all right. Yeah, so they gave me in these mounting brackets, in case you're wondering why I keep dumping all the screws out, is they gave me two different kinds of screws. Um, uh, there's a finer thread uh, screw for the extension brackets that I'm putting in now. And there's also a coarser thread screw that I guess is for different kinds of racks. Uh, my rack happens to use the fine thread screw that, that the extent the mounting bracket the extensions use but I, i've seen a lot of other racks that that use different screws okay that's good everything's good thumbs up okay mounting the second router is a lot easier you just sit on top of the first one and they there there's no gap in between them okay putting the screws in and so now these routers are going to be very see i'm shaking it around saying yeah yeah this is this is nice and tight so now i'm tightening up the mounting the extension brackets yep shaking it around yep everything is good thumbs up okay i'm done racking so now i'm putting in my i'm putting back my parts bins and all the stuff that goes on top of it all right, so now I'm panning over, and and I was going to show, I, I need to set this back up for the 3D printer, but um, I, I decided I'm, I'm not going to do it. I, you'll, you'll see me, I'm just going to put the PC up there and the, and the monitor, and, and I'll probably, <laughs> yeah, that's, um, I showed you a picture of, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a handful of twist ties that I keep. Every lab should have a variety of twist ties uh, for tying up different things. You would be surprised how often you'll need them. All right. Okay, so I'm putting the computer up there. I'm going to put the monitor up there. Keyboard. I'm kind of moving things around. So when I'm using that 3D printer, I need to be able to use a computer in the, in the 3D printer at the same time. And, and so the computer has to be, the keyboard has to be real close to the 3D printer, which is on top of the safe. It's bolted to the floor, it's dirty, and it doesn't vibrate. So when the 3D printer is, you know, printing away and it's, it's and it's shaking and and if you ever seen a 3D printer, you'll know what I'm talking about. They 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 shake pretty radically, uh, especially when they're doing small uh, strips of plastic. And I'm just kind of looking around. Yep, yep. Okay, so now we're going to install the NICs into our our new routers, and these NICs have 16. Uh, 10 100 ports in them and one uh, gig e port in it 
So we're going to go ahead and pop, I have two of them, I'm going to pop one on each router. And I'm putting on an anti-static um, wrist strap so I don't zap the, the cards while installing them. All right, and if you see, I, I, I grounded it to the chassis, uh, which happens to be bolted to the, um, the rack. And the rack is, is attached to ground. I've got a ground cable running to the rack. If the router wasn't mounted, you would still want to attach the wrist strap to the router because you don't want the potential difference between um, you and the router to cause the, a spark. All right, so you're trying to stay at the same potential when you're installing that card. Okay, I'm removing the blanks. And I'm removing the top blank because it's got a sticker on it and I want to put the clean blank in its place. And now I'm taking some canned air and I'm, I'm blowing some of the dust out of the out of the connectors on the mid plane inside the router. So uh, because I haven't had anything plugged into them and they collect dust after a while. Okay, putting the blanks back. Uh, blowing off the NIC cards, installing them. Now when you're installing these NIC cards, you, you, you should notice that I uh, I push on the NIC card, and it'd probably be better. And I and I push towards the bottom of the NIC where the uh, printed circuit board is mounted, and it, because you don't want to use the mounting screws to try to seat that card. Okay, so you you use your fingers or your hands with your fingers close to the bottom of that NIC card to push it and seat it inside that, that connector in the back, in the mid-plane. All right, and then you tighten up the screws to keep the, the card from popping out if someone accidentally grabs it. Okay, blowing off the other card, sticking it in there. Okay, tightening everything up. And I got it. we're done. Well, thumbs up. Good. Now I'm uh, now I'm storing <laughs> slot blanks or the blank slot covers, I should say. All right, thumbs up. Okay, so now I'm just giving you a a, a final look, uh, if you will, at at the rack, the front of the rack, the side of the rack and the back of the rack. Well, that's about it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you like it, give it a big thumbs up. That always helps. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them under the comments. Leave them in the comments under the video. I'll try to answer them the best I can. And I'll see you next time.